light of love. exquisite and perfect expression of God. Deep within is the memory that is emerging from its hiding place. The hiding place that has been held as the upside down of believing that it needed protection. This light, this wisdom, this innocence does not need protection, does not need defense. It is the strength of the universe It has the power of God and is the power of God. The pretense of defense is a made up identity that has no reality. And the truth is waiting to be illuminated. The truth of beauty and perfection and innocence is real and all that there is. It is the truth, the reality of your existence. Nothing else exists. The journey of separation chooses the belief in weakness, chooses the belief in separateness, chooses the belief in battle. And all the while, the truth, the reality of all life does not battle. In the truth of love there is only rejoicing. In the truth of love there is only celebration. In the truth of love there is only compassion. In the truth of love there is only acceptance in the truth of love. Peace is everything. The mind that made up a separate self cannot fathom the peace of love. A deep trust and acceptance is called for. A deep trust that allows you to embrace a new way. that invites truth, that invites clarity, that invites correction, the happiness of correction, the happiness of relinquishment of the past. the willingness to walk in the footsteps 
of the masters that came before you to follow, to learn. To accept and then in that acceptance to learn to offer love as you have not known in the past because you weren't aware of it in the past the prayer must come singing from the heart teach me to love Teach me the way. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to accept the miracle of love and transformation that God wills for me. Every day, every moment, brand new, to let go of what you think you knew and to open to the divine learning of love. This divine schoolroom is only divine with intention. This divine schoolroom is only recognized with willingness. The willingness to let go of the perception of getting, winning, proving, protecting, defending, thinking. Thinking is a separate self private thoughts, private ideas. And the willingness to give the mind to love and give the heart to love. <coughs> the willingness to learn. Letting prayer fill your heart all day until that divine holy communion of love is always present in your awareness. That divine union of love is always present, but it, it won't be recognized unless you want to recognize it. And it will wait patiently until you choose. Choose love. Choose harmony. Choose peace. And it will be remembered. The power of your choice is the power of God. The power of your willingness is the joining in the will with God to accept that God's will for you is peace and joy and you will accept nothing else you will make nothing else you will conjure up nothing else surrendering determination into the hands of God, into the hands of the Holy Spirit to be turned and transformed into devotion. Willingness to be peace itself. Willingness to let go of the battle of knowing. The willingness to recognize the battle is not out there. 
The battle is in the mind of the belief of separation, self-attack. And it is not God's will. There is no battle in love. So there cannot be a battle in you except by your choice. Why keep choosing pain? Why keep choosing separation when you can choose love when you can choose peace and it will be so by your choice the power of your choice holds the power of God every moment the moment of love, this moment, breathing, allowing love to be recognized, to be invited. In breathing, in the willingness to breathe deeply and fully, letting go of the mind as you breathe, Breathing deeply, and as you let go of the breath, the willingness to release the day, to release all thoughts of the day, all planning, all ideas of figuring things out, all surrendered. <coughs> And just breathing, breathing love, the willingness to surrender all judgments, all opinions, all assessments that cause suffering and pain within. Breathing and surrendering. And as you breathe deeply, surrendering the nervous system and all that has been attached to the nervous system as a belief of defense. Surrendering from the nervous system all memories of the past, willing to have the Holy Spirit cleanse the nervous system of the past. Breathing, allowing, consciously choosing to breathe because it is the connection to spirit. Breathing, surrendering the emotional body into the hands of God for healing, willing for the emotional body to be cleansed of the mind's belief of separation, willing for the emotional body to be cleansed of the past and the memories of separation, willing for the emotional body to be used only by love, to be filled with compassion peacefulness, joy, harmony, radiating the light of love, breathing, breathing deeply and fully surrendering the physical body and all that has been perceived and believed about it as an identity willing to recognize that the physical body and the energy bodies are all outside the outside world letting go 
that there is anything outside <coughs> to protect or defend. And breathing and surrendering the mind, returning the mind to God, the willingness that all pain that has come from the mind is the only perception of pain that there is. Willing now to surrender all beliefs in pain and suffering, scarcity, limitation, lack, all surrendered. And allowing the yes to fill every cell. The yes of choice, the yes of love, the yes of wanting to return to the awareness of love. And breathing, allowing. And as you breathe deeply and fully with consciousness, recognizing that you can stay in this awakened place of choice. And as you breathe, affirming that here in the infinite circle of love we are one, where you thought there were others, you're willing to recognize there is only one. The willingness to return to holy union is the letting go of the identity of the body as a separate self. And breathing and affirming that this sanctuary is filled with love. Everything is blessed. Everything is the light of love. This universe is all love. Nothing else exists. Accepting and affirming. There is only one presence here. It is the life force of God. It is in the holy union of love that the life force of God is recognized and lived. Living as the divine living as love and breathing and accepting there's only one heart one source one purpose one life and breathing and allowing that only love is real. I put myself in the hands of God, only love is real. Divine grace, divine love, divine breath, divine truth, only love is real. I've put myself in the heart of God, only love is real. Divine breath, divine heart, Divine truth, divine grace, only love is real. I've put myself in the hands of God, only love is real. Divine strength, divine truth, divine love, divine breath, only love is real. declaring with your heart and allowing this prayer to sing from your heart all day, all night, all through time, 
only love is real and the willingness to merge into that love and remember the willingness to remember what has always been what is only true that nothing else has ever been real only love I place all my attention to God in the highest. I place all of my attention where it is most helpful and will invigorate me in the deepest way. I join in the truth of the sun and the moon and the stars, and the forest, the earth and the sea, all one as the light of God, opening to the truth, the reality of love in the divine union with all life. I am here to learn, to be the student, to be the learner of the truth and follow the masters of love, willing to take every teaching into the heart and to affirm love in every moment. This eternal love is so pure and this light is so pure that it takes us to the heights of truth and purifies the heart and the mind. In the eternal love of God, this light lives in the shady forest. It is a marvelous light that illuminates everything at all times in the willingness the willingness to open the heart and see with the heart the light that is God. Voligado meu pensamento so onde eu devo ligar no sol, na lua, nas estrelas, na floresta, na terra, no mar. Esta estrada que estou andando, eu a mesmo mestre ando. Eu estrada de Jesus Cristo, onde nos afirmamos o amor. O amor eterno tá puro, que nem todos podem falar. E quem leva-nos nas alturas, para nos purificar. O amor eterno de Deus, vive nas matas sombrias. E uma luz maravilhosa que alumania todo dia. The willingness to enter the mysteries of love, to be taken, to be introduced through the doorway of love, into the mysteries of love. That nothing that you now know can even give you a glimpse of the divine mysteries of love and the immense brilliance of that light, of that love, of who you truly are. It's in surrender that the doorway opens and that the light shines as you allow to be taken, to lose and drop all the fear of God and to accept the love that is God, that is all that is divine.
seek we might have to medicate you resist your temptation to lie by speaking of separation from God or thinking about separation from God resist the temptation that is your choice. Otherwise, we might have to medicate you. Put you into the divine hospital. Feed you intravenously 24 hours a day with truth and love. In the ocean, a lot goes on beneath your eyes. The mysteries of the universe go on beyond your eyes. Listen. They have clinics there too, in the ocean, for the insane who persist in saying things like, I am independent from the sea. God is not always around, gently pushing and pressing up against my being. These are the lies that the ego likes to declare. I am independent from the sea and God is not always around, pressing gently against my being. These little words resist the temptation to lie by speaking of separation from God are very potent callings. They're very potent directions. Resist the temptation. Recognize the temptation is the first step. To recognize temptation rather than to be so lost in the habit of thinking that you know and that what you think has validity. <coughs> or that what you feel has validity because everything that you feel that is not joy and harmony is coming from the ego mind. That's its only use is to give you an indicator, is to illuminate for you that you are in a lie of separation from God and the belief of separation from God. That is what the only purpose is of recognizing what you feel is to recognize what your thoughts are. When there is disturbance in how you feel, when there is upset in how you feel. In the past, you gave it validity. You said, oh, well, then, I feel this way. I must be right. This means something real. Embrace these. No. In the journey of love, it's to resist the temptation to lie by speaking of separation from God in whatever way those words are. Are these words of love? Are these thoughts of love? Are these thoughts of peace? Am I feeling peaceful? Am I experiencing peace? If I'm not experiencing peace, I'm making something up. I'm lying. I'm lying to myself which is the only place that you can lie. Lie to yourself. Fool yourself by believing what you think you know. That was the game of the past. The game of the past said I must protect, defend, and be right. I must win. I must prove. I must control. The journey of love 
has no relationship in any way to the lies of the ego that believe in protection and defense and being right and listening to the mind of confusion, complexities, disturbances. These are all the lies. Otherwise, we might have to medicate you. The medication would be to do brain surgery, to extract the brain and its past. The blissful place would be amnesia. You try to medicate yourself by yourself, by having fantasies, by having ideas. You've used these as a medication in the past to keep you occupied, to keep you distracted from love, and to give you the false idea that you have control over something. When love is clearly nothing that needs controlling. To control means there has to be a threat. And the only thing that is perceived as a threat is what you're making up in your own mind. So you are trying to control something outside when in actuality it is the temptation of the lies in your mind that are actually the problem. Not trying to control anything outside. There's nothing to control only to surrender. In the ocean, a lot goes on beneath your eyes. This is an acceptance, a deep acceptance that I don't know how to look on anything without guidance. I don't know what anything means. I don't, I can't understand with the mind the mysteries of love the mysteries of the universe. It's not possible. That's why the guidance of love is so essential. Show me the way. I haven't walked in this foreign land before. Show me the way. Listen, they have clinics there too, under the ocean. For the insane who persist in saying things like, I am independent from the sea independent from the sea rather than the wave. The wave cannot be independent from the sea and yet it is not the sea. The ego's other ploy is to say you're the decider. You are the maker of all your existence. Forget about God. You're the center. The you is not the reality of God. That you that the ego speaks to is a false identity of pain and suffering and limitation and separation. The divine you, the divine I am, is the wave in the sea that happily, happily dances as the wave in the ocean of love. Not looking for importance, not looking for acclaim, not looking for prestige, not looking for being noticed. Aren't I the best wave? Aren't I the grandest wave? or the other side of the coin. Oh, I'm a nothing wave. Every other wave is more important. All made up. One wave, one ocean, one love.
I am independent from the sea and God is not always around gently pressing against my being. If you are not aware of God, it is because you're thinking something that has no value and is just made up. If you are not aware of God, you think you know something else and it's just there to be surrendered. That's the journey of love, coming back to love. A decision that comes from the mind, which is the only place that it can come from unless it is a decision that comes from guidance. A decision that comes from the mind is a conclusion based on everything you believe. It is showing you exactly what you believe. It is your road map if you're willing to look at it beyond being right. Every decision coming from the mind is a conclusion, gathering of information that you think is true, that you think is right, but it's all coming from the past. All that information, memories, all reactions come from the past. Surrender it all into the hands of God. There is no evidence that will convince you of the truth of what you do not want. If you want the truth, you will accept the truth. Nothing else will convince you of the truth if you do not want the truth. It's not possible. There is no convincing. You have to want the truth. That's why the teaching, what do I truly want, is so essential. And it, it's essential for it to be kept at the forefront because the ego mind will put it back there someplace. Oh, we can forget about that. I'm in reaction. This is a day of reaction. This is a day of knowing. This is a day of agendas. This is a day of proving. This is a day of control. And then that relationship with what do you truly want fades. It fades someplace. It's you're you're enraptured in your habit, in your knowing. And the what do I truly want fades back and you can't hear it because you're not listening. No, you don't even want to listen. But that not wanting to listen <clears throat> it's a game. It's a game that says, <clears throat> I'd rather be right than happy. What do I truly want? When that is in your heart and you, you, hold it in your heart because it's a holding in your heart by choice is it a is it a discipline yeah it is it is it's a practice to stay conscious to stay centered yes it's really funny you know in this world there's so much um, given to to beloveds who conquer something, become good gymnasts or good dancers or, you know, scientists or whatever. And you ask them, what, what was that? I had to focus. Well, here is the focus of your entire purpose of living. 
your entire purpose of being incarnated to focus on what you truly want and what your life is for what is the purpose of your life it's not to get a trophy of success by accomplishing being a good football player it's about what do you truly want the same answer will always come in honesty I want peace even if it's under a different distinction like oh, I want a car I want friends I want a big job no what you really want from those things is peace what you really want in your misalignment is joy but peace to be at peace is to have everything absolutely everything to recognize that that is what you truly want is to remember peace because that's who you truly are it's about coming home and resting in that love, in that light that you truly are and that is right now that's not next lifetime that's now now is peace now is love now you are the light now it's not in the future every time your mind goes to tomorrow every time you think there's something to plan you've forgotten what you truly want every time <coughs> and everything about every plan that you think about on your own in private thoughts is completely wrapped in the past you have nothing to glean from but the past and then the future will continue to be just like the past because that is what you're drawing from rather than I put the future into the hands of God and trust in its divine unfolding and I look, I look with love to that unfolding. I welcome the unfolding of the future because it is in the hands of God. That's the only way that you can actually welcome the future in glad anticipation that it will be in its perfection because your mind isn't involved as soon as your mind is involved it's the past and it will be just like the illusion of the past but you have this power within you completely to make that choice that's all that's required of you is to make the choice I don't know show me the way how simple, how brilliant of a place of healing and how truly loved every one heart is that God focuses everything on your healing so loved you can't even again conceptualize of being so loved and all the while you're running around like a chicken looking for 
satisfaction outside when the love is within because God is within the truth of your being is within have you met the divine within no because too busy looking outside too busy knowing too busy being right and planning and protecting and defending but that trust of love is to accept that God's will for you that God serves you constantly every second love is in devotion to you and your remembering constant never never leaving never never away never turning away always everything being poured where is your reception of that love that acceptance of that love you aren't aware of it when your mind is occupied you aren't aware of the love that is here yours you The Divine Mother and Father have their arms wrapped around you. Are you aware? Or are you busy in your mind protecting, defending, knowing, strategizing? Those are the choices. That's why the call is so deep to come and rest in God. To rest in God and let love take over have its way, lead the way with ease. What is it to be in the sidecar and let God drive? To be in the sidecar, there's no wheel there. There's no brake. There's no accelerator. There's no decisions in the sidecar of like, oh, I want to go faster. I want to go slower. I want to turn here. I want to see this, I want to see that, I want to know how we're going on this road, I want to know this, I want to know that. No. It's getting into the sidecar, resting, resting from the long journey of time that really never happened, but it feels so weary. It feels so weary because you battled the whole way. You battled in protection and defense, believing that you were a body that was going to die and you had to protect it and you had to defend yourself and believing that there was a world outside that was different. All of it made up. And now you just get into the sidecar. You get into the sidecar and you let God drive. And you trust the Divine Mother and Father of the Universe, the Divine Wisdom of the Universe, that you will not be left without, and that every teaching brings you back to that awareness, to that acceptance, if you choose. God's will for me is peace and joy. Am I willing to accept it and get in the sidecar? and let life unfold in its divine harmony. And as I accept love, I'm willing to let go of the story, the lies, the concepts, the past, the attachment, the, the deep attachment that is perceived and believed in that I'm a separate self with a separate identity and a separate story that means something. And I'm going to work really hard and I'm going to keep working at making this story better so that I can have little stars on the side of my report card that I give myself 
that says, wow, you are really something. Well, how could you be otherwise? And at the same time, you are nothing. You are everything and you are nothing in perfection. There is nothing to be and there is everything that you are beyond the comprehension of a separate identity. Beyond. Resist your temptation to lie by speaking of separation from God. Every time you say, I think, you are, you are holding a lie of the separation of God. Every time you have an opinion, you are affirming the lies of separation from God. What is it that you think you know? What opinions do you have that you hold as important? Or because of the duality of the same coin that you want to hold, oh, my thoughts are all crap and I'm just a piece of crap. and It's all the same. It's all lies. No truth. No pulling yourself up by the bootstraps to become better. Just surrendering everything into the hands of God and saying, I don't know a thing. There's nothing to know. Everything is already perfect. Let me open to the divine alchemy of that transformation and accept and invite that transformation. Every moment. Seek not to change the world, but choose to change your mind about the world. When you surrender your mind into the hands of God, healing takes place. It doesn't. There is no healing in trying to change the world or try to protect yourself from the world. It's just a made-up story in your mind that has no validity and keeps you running around in circles. There's no healing there. So God keeps calling you, Spirit keeps calling you to stop trying to change the outside world. That's in the hands of God. It's not your business at all. And as long as you think it is your business, you will suffer. You will be in pain and suffering from the belief that it is your business to change the world. It is not your business to change the world. There is no world to change. There is only your mind to surrender. This is an upside-down confusion. To change your mind about the world and what you think you know. To surrender everything that you believed was out there that needed fixing, that needed saving, that needed correction by you, that needed to be made right by you, to have a cause, your cause is God. You are the effect of God. There is no other cause. When you surrender every situation that you believe is out there about everyone and you are willing to see only the light that is the truth of everything, the belief of the world that you held will heal and you will help heal humanity. That's the only offering that you can actually offer. There is no other way but to see the truth of every beloved as the light of God and let 
let the spirit of love express itself through what used to be the instruments of the ego. The instrument of the ego is the body. The instrument of the ego is the voice. The instrument of the ego are the eyes and the ears. To surrender what you think you see, what you think you hear, what you think you can speak into the hands of spirit that you don't want these senses anymore to be used for anything but to be used by love which means you're no longer in charge of them you have no filter anymore that filters and decides what things mean it's all in the hands of God you don't know anything. I don't know how to look on this. I don't know what this means. Show me, please, how to be of service. I don't know. I don't know what anything should look like. I don't know what it means. I don't know. To heal is to not Seek not to change the world. Seek not to change the world, though everything in you wants to be in control and everything in you wants to have an opinion and an assessment and an idea. It's all coming from the past. You have no place else to glean from. But God is calling you, Spirit is calling you to choose to change your mind about the world. To change your mind and recognize there is nothing outside that is not the truth of love. Because there is nothing actually outside. And the world that you thought you knew and thought you saw and thought you had a handle on or that you were afraid you didn't have a handle on begins to disappear because only love is real and in its place you begin to see divine grace divine truth divine light divine love because only love is real and there is nothing happening except in your own mind Every, this can't be in any way conceptualized or understood. It has to be accepted. Mm -hmm. There is nothing in this mind except private thoughts that are made up that have no reality. Nothing. To not know is to begin to heal. The willingness to trust, the willingness to accept. You believe that you are safer by maintaining illusions than you would be to joyously accept the truth. That's the upside downness. That's the insanity. To believe that you are safer in your illusions. Except that the funny thing is, is that the only reason that you believe that you need to be safe is because of illusions. The illusions themselves are the problem because you believe in your own mind that, that there is threat because you believe in threat. You believe in scarcity. You believe in lack. You believe in separation. That's the only problem, is that you believe in separation. There is no problem. Never has been a problem never will be a problem except the belief that you think you're separate from God and there is no problem because you are not separate from God because your mind and your experience says something that doesn't make it real your mind belongs to a false identity you gave your mind 
to an illusion. You split the mind, and the mind that is still of God is not recognized. And this, and this the, journey the journey of love, of love is the willingness, willingness to, come to come back to giving, to giving the mind, the mind over, to, over God. to God again. To return returning the mind to God, to God by, choice. by choice. Because you, because chose, you chose to, se to separate. No, no condemnation. No truth. No tr because, because, because you couldn't separate. But in your mind, your mind you, you can think anything you want to. You can make, make, make up a million, a million stories, stories a day. day. And you can, and believe, you can believe the one you want to. And be and miserable, be miserable for, it. for it. But it isn't, but it isn't God's will for, for you. And it isn't and the it truth. Isn't truth. And it has, and it has reality. no reality. So why, so why bother? bother? Other than, Other just, than just the concept, the concept of fear. Of fear. The fear, the fear of not, not being, being in control. control. <coughs> you, have, you have worked. Your ego, your ego has, has worked tremendously, tremendously hard, hard at believing that you had some illusion of control. control. And it is and by the grace, grace of love, love that you actually, actually begin, begin to recognize that you don't have control, have control because there's nothing there's to control. To control. Love loves you isn't in control. control. That would be that ridiculous. Would be the only the reason, reason to control anything control is because, because you believe that there's a threat. threat. And there is no threat in love. love. Only and harmony and peace and joy. And, joy. and the full and abundance the of all of love. love. So the so threat, the threat the threat of not being in control is coming from your mind that wants control. Making up its own stories, it's like making up nightmares and then trying to blame something outside you for the nightmares that you're making up and boarding up your doors and windows because of the nightmares that you're having at night. It's all insane has no purpose. But the ego is just smart enough to make it look like you're accomplishing something. Mm -hmm. That your plans are so well thought out that they make so much sense and you agree with your own mind. your own cheerleading section mm -hmm. for the ego. And it mixes up pain and pleasure just enough to make you think that you're getting something accomplished on your own. Pain and pleasure both have the same purpose, equally exactly the same purpose, to make the body seem real and to affirm separation mm -hmm. by making the body seem real. By focusing your attention on protection of taking care of the body, protecting the body, not really loving care of the vehicle of love, but using the body to try to get pleasure which means escape from pain, except that it's a vicious cycle. Pain leads to the seeking of pleasure, and the pleasure can't be held on to because it's always temporary, and then you always fall back into pain. Anticipated, remembered, trying to hold on to it, trying to get some kind of pleasure out of your body identity because that's where all pleasure lands is in the body identity. It's not of spirit. Joy is of spirit and joy is a permanent state. Joy is endless. 
There's no high of joy. It's a constant. It is a state of being. It's love. Pleasure <clears throat> is a getting, an anticipation, a wanting of sensation, a sensation of worth, a sensation of being, being getting something that was missing. But it always comes back to pain, and it's always the running from pain. But pain stays because pain is in the mind. Pain is in the belief of lack, of separation. The ego has no intention of providing anything and can't provide anything but pain and pleasure. And it's always temporary, and it's always a fix, and that's why it's addiction. Everything about pain and pleasure you can apply to addiction very clearly, very easily. Every beloved who is addicted seeks pleasure and the escape from pain. That is the purpose of addiction. That is how addiction has its hold, is by seeking pleasure to get rid of pain. The entire ego system is an addiction. Everything about it is an addiction. An addiction to being right, an addiction to winning, an addiction to control, an addiction to trying to get away from pain through your own mind that can never be accomplished because it is actually the source of the pain. You're looking like the Trojan horse looking for the enemy outside when the enemy is within, in your mind. There isn't really an enemy within, but you can make up anything you want to. And every beloved has made an enemy within of self-loathing, of self-hatred, of the belief that you are separate from God, this is all made up. It's all illusion, it's all made up. And the only reason that there is a path of healing is because left to your own devices, you stay in your misery. Because you haven't recognized that it is actually the mind that's making up everything that is the cause of the pain and the suffering. So the path of love says, come this way and let these things go. And pay attention to this and recognize that you have this choice. Number one, you have choice. You are not a victim of anything. No one has ever done anything to you. No one. Ever. I don't care if you were in a past life with Attila the Hun, or you were Attila the Hun. You did nothing and nothing was done to you. It wasn't true. It's a story of an illusion of separation. And your story, your personal story, is no different than that story. And the suffering of humanity is all wrapped up in lifetime after lifetime after lifetime of an identity of story. And the, the upside downness is the holding on to the story as if there's a pride of ownership, as if this is some prize that you are holding when it's where all of your belief of pain and suffering that you keep reaching back into the suitcases of your past and keep pulling out your evidence to relive it again. Mm -hmm. That's insane. <coughs> to be determined to relive it. To identify with it to wear it like a badge of honor. Look at the mess I was. Look at how damaged 
I believe I am. Look at what everybody did to me. How I suffered. There is no suffering in love. You have to surrender the lies of the past and accept the truth of love. And I promise that the lies of the past disappear. Disappear. How is that possible when you so deeply believe in the nightmare and the story and the reactions and the memories and the evidence in the body and everything else that you believe so dearly that it's true that you don't even see how dearly you hold on to it because of course the ego doesn't want you to think that you're holding on to it the ego wants you to believe you are a victim that this happened to you because if you're a victim then you don't have to choose and then the ego stays exactly as it is. You're never going to choose love because you believe you're a victim. You believe you don't have choice. You believe that choice is not something that you can accept or that you can join with. But that's where the power is. That's when the power comes alive within you. That's when you choose to no longer believe in the lies of the past. When you resist your, to, your temptation to lie by speaking of separation from God, when you finally resist it and say, no, I'm not buying it anymore. I was promised, the masters have all promised me that I was whole and complete and innocent and the light of God itself. I either accept it or I can keep choosing what I think I know. And when you accept the teaching of Jesus among all masters, all masters taught the same thing, different elements, that there was no suffering. He did not die for your sins. He did not die. He showed, he, he demonstrated that the body was not the truth. That the body didn't mean anything that his feelings were not hurt by the beliefs of others, that there were no others, that all that he saw was the light of God, the innocence of life in every form, in every beloved. And he blessed, and he held, and he comforted every beloved. It didn't matter what they believed. It didn't matter who stuck the spear in. It didn't matter who put the crown of thorns on his head. It didn't matter who flogged him. None of it was true. He was demonstrating the lies of separation. That there was no separation. That he could not be harmed. Is that different from your past? Did you not believe that you were crucified? Did you not believe that you were attacked? That you were disrespected? That you were dishonored? That you were left to die? Everybody holds the same belief. Everybody. Everybody believes that they were maligned, that they were hated, 
And the truth was that no one did anything ever. It was a false concept. It was imagery. It was a facade, a fantasy, a dream. To accept that there is no death, to accept that you cannot be hurt, that you can't lose a thing, that you are whole and complete right now, that your heart is the center of the universe, is to accept mm. the truth of all life completely and to heal you must accept to surrender the past that's what this is about is to surrender the past and everything you think you know about it and be free of this fantasy story that has been locked in your mind and expressed through the body. I was called to serve love, not as an identity, but through the identity that had believed so deeply in suffering and pain and had a good enough story to compete with anybody's. It meant nothing. <clears throat> it never happened. <coughs> it was a dream of illusion, of separation. To accept that only love is real is to let the dream go to let the fantasy go, to let the identity go. As Jesus so beautifully demonstrated and continued the demonstration with the realization of eternal life for everyone to see. No death, no going anywhere, the body, yes, falling away, so what? So what? You are not the body. You are the divine light of God that will never, ever die. And you won't go anywhere. Life eternal is right here. Not about the form, about the mystery of the divine creation that is always in existence, the power of God that is life itself and returning to that awareness which is letting go of everything that you have known in your mind of a personal identity and the freedom of no longer competing with anything or anyone or proving or winning or protecting because every protection Every idea of winning, every idea of proving has been about the identity, the body. And it doesn't exist. It isn't who you are. It will fall away. Until it falls away, it can serve love. It can be transformed. The form itself can be transformed to be a vehicle of love, but it still is not the truth of God because it will disappear, the form of it will disappear back into dust. Jesus didn't go looking for the body. I gotta take this with me. I gotta preserve the body because it's important. No. His return of his divine spirit to be able to be recognized by those beloveds who are willing to open their hearts enough 
to recognize the divine carried that truth within. As you are being called to carry that truth of your eternal light, of opening to the awareness of your divine presence, of your divine exquisite being that has no separation, that has nothing to compete with, all in divine equality, union. Imagine, just for a second if you can, a life without competition, a life without the belief of scarcity, limitation, a life without fear, because your fear is all conjured up to say no to God. Your fear is used as a weapon to say no to God to distract, to hold you as a willing candidate of separation. Yes, fear will arise because the ego will use fear to say, don't surrender, stay in control, and be very concerned about the feelings that you have in your body of liking them or not liking them, of having opinions and allowing those opinions to dictate your mood, your reactions, your, uh, your life force within your life means nothing. And in that letting go of all of that meaning, you embrace freedom because that's what the chain of limitation is is your own mind believing in limitation itself and having reactions to your perceptions all self-made a whole system of suffering self-involved and self-made by choice not a victim of, but choosing. And God is calling you to stop choosing pain and suffering. To stop choosing, to recognize that's what you're choosing. And to stop giving meaning to it with your own thoughts. That there is no problem. There is no separation and refusing, refusing to accept the lies. Resist the temptation of the lies to speak of separation or to see separation. Resist, that's your choice. You are the commander that makes the choice to join love or to accept pain and suffering. It's the only two choices. Love or self-hatred. But to recognize that is the choice. And it isn't God's will for you to suffer. There is no suffering in love. Can the mind understand this? Absolutely not. The mind is determined to project suffering on everything. There is no suffering in love. None at all. Resist your temptation to lie by speaking of separation from God. You are the chooser. Every word that comes from your lips is coming from your mind and is either a lie of separation or offering of love. Choose every moment 
and as you choose in your willingness to choose the lies fall away the lies of separation fall away because they're no longer nurtured because they're no longer um, given importance because they're no longer valued and they don't have any power unless you give them power the happiness comes from the realization that they're all lies it's not about processing the lies to understand the lies better the lies are all the same I want to have a deeper understanding of all my lies. <laughs> I have just to realize that they're all lies so that I can choose between lies and love. And when you feel weak in the choice, you ask for strength. You ask for strength. You call on the strength of the divine to help you in your choice of what you truly want. Help me. Show me the way. Lead me. Hmm. I don't perceive my own best interests. Show me the way. 